Hi, this is Julia. I am going to give you a quick review on retainage and job manager. Uh, we call this AR retainage uh, because we as the customer are retain, retaining or have retained a certain amount of our billings and uh, then we will be invoicing later. This is not payables. Uh, we're not dealing with retainage with vendors. All right, so um, we are going to go to uh, sales orders and I'll just go ahead into the using the tile uh, going to sales orders and then I'm going to say new and I'm going to uh, open up a new sales order and the customer is the Canon Group. There they are. Um, I have chosen not to uh, do a preset retainage amount on the customer. Therefore, when I look down here in the job manager area, um, I'm on the first column in the header at the bottom. There's a retainage percent field. Um, that would have come through uh, should I have um, put it as a default from the customer, but I chose not to. And I'm just going to use a 10% um, retainage. The uh, uh, next thing I'm going to do is put in the billing line and I'm just going to do it with a GL but it could be any kind of line and uh, I'm going to use the name and it is going to be job sales. So go ahead and select that. Uh, I'll just do a quantity of one. Jump over here to unit price $1,000. All right then um, uh, I have my job numbers way over here. It doesn't need to be uh, that far over, but uh, that's where it is for me. And um, I could use the lookup, but I happen to know this is one, oh, oh, got to look at my cheat sheet, uh, 2-01. And I don't remember the task number, so I'm going to just choose one of these task numbers. Uh, make sure I do have the right number. Okay, uh, and you'll see that uh, the retainage to, uh, percent did come down from the header, but if for some reason you didn't retain on some of your billing lines, you could make that zero or, or higher or lower if you needed to. Um, if you don't want the user entering orders to make any changes, then you could make this uh, field go away, uh, not show up. Uh, of course, I could have multiple lines. I'm going to just keep it simple uh, for this demonstration uh, and with my one line. And I'm going to go to the line uh, menu choice. There's one called functions and there is one called calculate retainage. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm going to just say yes. Um, there are two choices there, but we're not tr trying to train you at this point, but uh, you can see it's pretty easy. Um, you just say calculate retainage. It's using the 10% that it saw on the line and it is now putting a second line in for the retainage. All right, so that means this invoice when I send it out will be for $900, which you see here in the subtotals at the bottom. Um, but it'll also show in the detail that we're retaining $100. All right, and um, you'll see that the job number and task number came down uh, as it uh, should. All right, and we don't have any retainage percent uh, or retainage amount on the retainage line because it is the retainage line. It is not being retained on. All right, so now um, we're going to post and then we will look at the uh, accounts receivable report. So I'm back on the Roll Center and I am now going to um, print the rec age receivables report. Um, I'm on the particular customer that I know has retainage. Uh, I'm going to click on the reports tab up here and sales reports. Uh, maybe it's finance. It's the finance reports and age receivables with retainage. Um, in 
this case, um, I will want to print detail uh, to see the retainage. Um, and uh, it, I am just printing it for this one client. Uh, let me look at the date. I think I'll move this date out to uh, the end of August and just preview for you. All right, so I do have a lot of activity going on with this uh, client, typical sample data. At the bottom of the report, you're going to see a retainage balance. In this case, I just have one, uh, the one that I put in. However, if I had multiple uh, retainages, I would then in this grid see that. Uh, I do see the one that I entered for you here tells me the job number and the date and time that it was entered. So uh, we have the details there. Uh, we also know that the invoice that we particularly the last one on the list here, $900, is due and collectible, uh, but the retainage will not be due until we bill it. So this is informational to let us know that it's still outstanding. I'm going to go ahead and uh, close this. And I want you to see that we also have the same detail on the job. This was the job that I posted to. So I'm going to go ahead to ledger entries. And the uh, sales order that I entered for you today um, is represented by the first two lines, which are, in fact, the entry type of sale. Um, with the particular date and the amounts and so forth. And you'll see that we have um, the original $1,000 and then we have a retainage amount showing up. <coughs> and uh, if I slide over here a little bit further, you'll see that uh, it knows that it is a retainage line and it's still open. And open means that uh, it, it's uh, available to be billed at some uh, future date, which will be our next step. So the last step um, back on the uh, Roll Center is to uh, build the retainage at some date you agree that uh, the job is done and satisfactory. So in this case, uh, retainage uh, is not a shippable type of thing. So we don't go to sales orders. We go to sales invoices. Um, we say new, um, get to the customer that uh, we need to bill retainage. Uh, at this point, so I typed in the Canon group. I'm on the lines, and I'm going to use a facility to help me. I'm going to go to the line menu choice and functions and use the choice called get retainage. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, I can specify a particular job number or maybe just posting date uh, so that I can maybe pick up certain ones that are sitting out there if we have multiple uh, retainages um, on different jobs or same jobs. But in this case, I'm just going to leave everything blank and say, get anything that you can find. And of course, it found the line that I um, had posted uh, previously. And uh, so at this point, we are billing retainage. Um, it produces an invoice to let them know that it's time to pay their retainage. Um, it defaults a certain uh, description, but you can certainly uh, change it if you want, but it is uh, fairly informational. Um, it tells them what informa uh, what original invoice it was uh, retained on. Uh, it also has a job number. I'm probably not displaying my job number, but it is uh, holding the job number and the task number as well, all of which uh, can be formatted to your uh, invoice. Um, so at this point, we're ready to post, and uh, we probably will have to tell it that it's a non-taxable situation. This can be set up um, uh, so it defaults in. And now I'm going to go ahead and post. Um, I just want you to know the retainage, uh, before I do post, let me uh, say no for a second here, uh, the retainage uh, 
GL account comes from the customer posting group. Uh, on that posting group, we have uh, assigned a particular GL account for retainage. Um, so that's how it knows that. It's a setup issue. So uh, again, let's go ahead and post. Oh, kind of need to release it. It does tell me to do that. That's typically a, a process that you uh, normally do. Um, and um, just sometimes in demos, I forget. So let's go ahead and post now. There we go. All right.